Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school computer science teacher. In the last video, we learned how to set up Android Studio to start programming in Java. I have this project already begun. It has the default layout, which is a constraint layout with a text view in the middle. Let's just delete that text view. I'm going to show you a few things around the screen here. This area of the screen is called the palette. That's where you'll find the user interface components that you can use. The component tree lists everything that you have already put into the layout. This is the design area where you will dra drag and drop different components. The attributes of those components show up here when you select them. And just notice down at the bottom, we're in design view right now. There is also a text view, which shows you the uh, sort of the code version of your layout. And you, if you want, there's a preview on the side. That's uh, You can disable that if you want to. Let's go back to the design view. I'm going to put a, an edit text in there, uh, a plain text version of that. I'll drag and drop that onto the screen. Let me zoom in just a little bit. So there's that. Um, back up to common here, I'll take a button and a text view. So these three components are just laid on top of the um, working area here, but they are not constrained. That means when you run the app, they won't stay put here. There's a little message to warn you about that. This view, this is the edit text, is not constrained. It only has design time positions, so it will jump to 0, 0 at runtime unless you add the constraints. Well, let's do that. Click on one of your objects here like this. I'm going to set the default margins. That's right here, 0 dip right now. Those are density independent pixels. Uh, drag from the little circle, the white circle, to the edge, and that will set a 16 dip margin. Um, there are 160 dips in an inch, in a physical inch on the device. So this is about one-tenth of an inch as a minimum margin. You can see its margin is larger than that here. We're going to deal with that in a second. This button I would like to be just underneath the text view, or sorry, the edit text. So I'll attach it to the bottom there. And then same thing, I'll attach it to the sides. And finally, the text view I'll attach to the bottom of the button. So they're kind of all stacked up attaching this to each side. So if I run this uh, as is, all of these will be here and all stacked up. Let's check that out. Okay, so my three components are there. They're all stacked up on top of each other. Let's keep working on it. I'm going to leave the emulator in the background so I don't have to start it every time. Um, you'll notice I did not put a bottom constraint on any of these actually, but especially this last one is not attached to the bottom of the screen. Watch what happens when I do that. That text view is now halfway between the button and the very bottom of the screen. Uh, I'd like to make it uh, sort of spread out to fill all that available space. Over here in the Attributes panel, the Layout, Width, and Height. The width is wrap content, the height is wrap content. That means that the component will grow or shrink to just barely fit the text that's in it. So if I change that to Match Constraint on the width, it will grow to fit the width of the app, except for that 16 dip gap or margin on the outside. Same with the height. I can choose match constraint there. I just want to show you though, if I go to this button and I try to use layout, oh, let's do the layout width first. That'll be fine. Match constraint. That'll spread it out as well. But layout height is not going to be okay here because it has no bottom constraint. So when you change it to match the constraint, there isn't one and it, uh, it just shrinks it up to nothing. So we leave that one, the height at wrap content. We do the same thing with this edit text. We can make it wider, but because we don't have a bottom constraint on it, um, we can't change the height of it. Okay, let's zoom in here and see a little bit more detail about this. Ooh, these are very close to the edge. Looks like I don't have a 16 dip gap there. I notice that happens quite often in Android Studio where it gets one of the margins wrong. There we go, that looks better. Okay. So the, under this, this first edit text, its ID identifier is edit text. We're going to need that in a little while. Um, it says name in it right now. That's the text of the object. So down here under common attributes, you'll find name. I'm going to remove that entirely. And now it says nothing at all. Uh, another option that I like to use is the hint. If I put name there, then you'll see it shows up kind of in gray. As the user types in here or clicks in here, then the this little hint will disappear. The button, 
uh, is called, sorry, let me say again, the ID at the top is button. That's what it's called in the user interface. The text of the button, it just says button right now. Let's change it to greet me. The default style in Android is everything will show up in capitals. And this text view currently says text view. Let's just remove the text from it entirely. Um, I'm also going to maybe change the appearance of the text to be a little bit larger. Uh, let's make it large. Okay, so we now have three user interface components. You can see them down here. The IDs are listed here as well. Um, let's go back to our Java file now and start writing a little bit of code. So here's our class. Starts here, ends here. There's one method in it already. This method sets up the user, uh, sets up the app with the user interface and so on. Let's make a new method, which is going to be uh, for our button. So public void, we need a name for it. Um, let's call it greet me. It takes a view as a parameter, which is the button itself. Um, two things to do here. We want to get the text views reference and then tell the text view to change what it says. Uh, so let's do a couple of things. Text view, we'll call it output equals, uh, oops, not new, find view by ID r dot id dot text view. Now I have another video explaining how the, all this works as well. So if this is not enough, feel free to browse a little bit more. Um, the other thing I'll need is the um, edit text. I want to grab the name that the user types in there. Let's just call that input. Find view by ID r dot id dot. Uh, that was the edit text. So these, in purple here, these are the IDs that are written over here in the XML file. Okay, so let's get the name. Let's we'll st store that in a string. Let me scroll a little here. We want to go to the input and get the text from it. That actually, let me just show you again, that will give us an editable, which is not the same as a string. We have to convert that to a string. There, now we have a string from the edit text and the in output I want to set its text to this following string hello and I'm gonna add on whatever the name is with an exclamation point welcome to Android okay so I have a long string typed in here it's kinda of giving me an error because this isn't the best way to enter a string uh, this is a hard-coded string rather than um, uh, using a, a string you define elsewhere, which is better for multiple languages, for example. Okay, so let's see what's happened. We get the output text view. We get the input edit text. We retrieve the name from the input. We put a message on the output. The only thing that's left is to actually connect this method with the button. That's what this little error is. Let's go back to the layout. Click on the button once. Go down in the attributes area through common attributes to the onClick method. Choose there the greet me method. Now, when this button is clicked, the greet me method will run. So let's do that now. Okay, here's the app. I'm going to click here and type in my name and choose greet me. There we go. Hello, Brandon. Welcome to Android. You'll notice that the keyboard doesn't disappear. You need some more coding to make that happen. But to start with, that's pretty good. And you can put in more if you want to and run it again. And every time you run it, it's replacing this text, even if you don't always see the difference. There we go. Okay. So we've got an app with a t an edit text and a button and a text view and a little bit of logic in behind the scenes. Now, if you have any questions, of course, you can ask me in the comments below. Thanks.